Yo, 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 it's your boy, the star coming to you live from the pad, about to give it to you, Ron, I'm about to keep it 1,000. Man, 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 did you guys, I mean, did you guys see that coming? I did not see the Kawhi Leonard situation happening the way that it did. I knew that the Lakers, if they didn't get an answer by 12 o'clock p.m. Pacific time, uh, West Coast time, on Friday, that we were kind of out. I had a feeling about that. Um, but even then, there was Eric Pinkins. He's a capolog capologist. He was saying that the Lakers could kind of hold out. I still was like, the Lakers are out because he wants a long-term deal. If he would have, if he would have um, wanted to team up with AD and LeBron, he would have done it already. So Friday night, chilling. You know, I'm talking to the wifey. 11 p.m. Bam. It pops up, you know. This guy's going to the Clippers. Then right after that, Paul George traded to the Clippers. What? What? Are you kidding me? What the, what the hell happened? What happened? And I'm, it just, everybody's just, Chris Broussard's hiding. All of these people <laughs> that was, oh, I'm 99%. I'm 96 point. I'm, I'm. I'm like 100% sure. I'm a 99.99% sure. There's a bunch of clowns on Twitter. Um, oh yeah, this is uh, this is gonna break. You know, RDA ambition. Hey, that dude's usually on point. I was, I was a little shocked that RDA, RDA ambition uh, or RD ambition was. You know, he flaked out, man, and he. I think he deleted his account and disappeared. So. Uh, that that just when that thing unfolded I was just like wow right so at this point it's Lakers a bus man it's, it's Lakers or nothing else that's how I see it I see it as Lakers or nothing, or nothing else you gonna ride with the Lakers or you gonna go with the bandwagon just this is remind me the same thing with CP3 had joined Blake Griffin but this is even bigger than that because the Clippers literally it's not a it's, it's it's like from the NBA standpoint, literally have two of the top five players. With the Lakers, this is more like a barbershop conversation, like two of the top five, like an argument type of thing. Like everybody's favorite player is LeBron, or you know, everybody has a list, and I'm on that list, LeBron is on that on the, on the top five. AD is in the top five, you know, among that list. But if we're talking about NBA. Paul George was a MVP candidate this year, and he was a defensive player of the year candidate. So he was playing his ass off. He was playing some good basketball. Whether you like him, whether he's a snake or whatever, you got to give him his props. Um, so Paul George had uh, a hell of a season. Kawhi Leonard had a hell of a season. So the whole snake move, he's setting up, he's setting up a, a, a in a, a meeting with Rob Palenka and Jeannie Buss right next to Paul George. So him and Paul George, they got this little secret affair going on where they're working with each other. <laughs> Look, here's the deal. Kawhi did not want to come to the Lakers. We can blame Magic, which partially it, it kind of did us in. He, he kind of immediately right after talking with the uncle, he kind of went to R Ramona and spilled the beans. We could blame that. Okay, yeah, whatever. But in my mind, I think Kawhi was only going to join the Lakers, LeBron and AD, as a last resort. Okay? So now that he's with Paul George, they got their thing where they're in LA. It's their team. He's not second fiddle. I don't think he would have been second fiddle if he came to the Lakers. I thought he would have been the, one, the main guy. He would have been the main dude. And it would have been based more so around AD and him. And LeBron would have been more of a supportive player. You know, because LeBron's not a selfish player. And I think the narrative is always, if you come play with LeBron, you're going to be third fiddle. It's like, how, how is he going to be third fiddle 
when you guys was just comparing him to Michael Jordan a couple weeks ago. He was comparing Kawhi Leonard to, to Michael Jordan a few weeks ago. But I got to give the Clippers props. They were very quiet. Nothing leaked out. There was no nothing. You never heard anything with the Clippers. You have never heard anything. When all of this stuff was going out, I'm hearing this, I'm hearing that. Majority was Clippers. I mean, majority was Raptors and Lakers. All you kept hearing was, oh, man, uh, it's a, it's the, he's going back to the Raptors or he's going back to the Clippers, right? It's a lot of people that were in sports media that just flat out embarrassed themselves with this whole Kawhi situation. So... Um, I think the Clippers were the most professional out of all three teams. But I think that he already had his mindset on going to the Clippers. He wanted to be in L.A. He did not want to be under LeBron and, and, and A.D. And the whole thing is you're going to be third fiddle. But that's not LeBron. LeBron's a very unselfish player. Very unselfish. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But that's a lot of LeBron fanboys, you know, Colin Cowherd, Chris Broussard, um, all of these guys that are kind of riding LeBron's jock. And they're saying very flattering things about him and kind of disparaging other players that, uh, you know, when it comes to the blame pie, they're blaming other guys other than LeBron. They're not bringing up LeBron's flaws, but they're bringing up the other players' flaws. So... This is the same thing that Kevin Durant brought up a few years back where I guess him and LeBron kind of got into a little, you know, they kind of had a little, not a, not an argument, but they didn't, you know, LeBron didn't take too kindly to KD's words about people not wanting, wanting to play with LeBron. So everybody, I guess, felt blindsided, but you got to look at it like this, man. I guess the worst, the worst, uh, out of all parties, the worst, I would say, I feel bad for Westbrook. I hope Westbrook can find a way to get traded to a big city or a new team, hopefully Miami, maybe uh, New York can find out a way by December uh, because they can't do the trade now. But I think December, by December, mathematically, they can work something out. I don't know what team uh, because he has a pretty, pretty big contract. So I don't know. What team is going to take on that that contract? But Russell Russell Westbrook is a star. He can fill he can fill up arenas. So we'll see how that plays out. But as far as PG thirteen man, you know, I, I, hey, I mean, that's up to you guys. What do you guys think, man? Leave a comment below. Uh, but we're gonna get into. Um, we're going to get into uh, what the Lakers did, man. Because the Lakers, um, I guess as soon as they got the news, they went ahead and they did some. They, they went to work. Of course, they were blindsided. Of course. But they went to work. Because that was my thing. My thing was, these guys shouldn't have waited for Kawhi. They should have gave him an ultimatum. And let him decide right there on the spot. It's not that hard. I mean, you got two Hall of Famers. You have two Hall of Famers. You got Anthony Davis and LeBron James. It's nothing to be depressed about. I was listening to Lakers talk on 17 ESPN in Los Angeles. And the guy that was doing the show, he was just so depressed. And it was so gloomy and sad. It's like, dude, you guys... I mean, Laker fans, come on, wake up now. Like, dude, last year, we pretty much had a bunch of potential and young players that, oh, man, oh, this guy might be this and this guy might be that. Look, all of this nonsense. That's kind of one of the reasons I didn't really want to make any videos because I just didn't feel like the Lakers really had that much talent. I mean, you had guys that were young. And they had potential, but you never really knew what they were because some games they would be on, other games they wouldn't be on. There was no there was no real talent. It was just going to be a bunch of uh, videos of me gassing up players that were, you know, okay player, role players, good players in the league, but we, we wouldn't know what they would turn out to be. 
the Lakers aren't there anymore. The Lakers have a real legitimate team right now. And because we didn't get Kawhi, that's not the end of the world, man. I mean, hell yeah, the Clippers, they put together a great team. They put together a great team. You have Kawhi Leonard coming off of a world beater seated world beater season where he just took out the Golden State War Warriors. He um, you know, this guy got finals MVP. He he dominated the playoffs. He dominated the finals. He took out so many teams on the East. He just looks like, wow, man, this dude's incredible. And then he goes into free agency and he joins the Clippers. But Paul George, and I already mentioned what Paul George, you know, what his accolades were. Paul George, I mean, this dude was balling out. So I think I was just watching um, the Spider-Man film on Netflix. The reason I bring this up is because I see a little similarity. It's like I was watching Spider-Man and it was uh, it was on Netflix. It's like a cartoon animated movie and it's talking about like these different forms of spider-man that meet eat meet up in this like weird parallel universe and i think that's kind of what Kawhi leonard and, and paul george are they're like it's like two different forms of the same kind of player um both very good both in their prime both can really compete at this at this point of their career but they're pretty much the same they're, they're pretty much the same kind of player. You know, one player might edge this player and that. Another player might edge this other player and that. But they're pretty much the same player, just in different. You, I, hopefully it makes sense when you guys listen. If it doesn't, just comment below. But uh, I think the biggest problem with the Clippers will be will be down low. When they, ha when they go against teams like uh, the Lakers, when you have to go down low, um, when you have to go down there and bang, you know, unless they're going to be just shooting threes, they're going to be like a team that's just going to be killing people with shooting. Um, they, if they have to go down low, that's where they're going to get exposed. Because I mean, you when you got when you got somebody like Anthony Davis, and when you got somebody like Demarcus Cousins and Javale McGee down there, you got that height. And you got that physicality down low. I think that the Lakers. I think the Lakers are a better team. With the with the Lakers did in free agency, I think the Lakers are a better team. I think if there's a lot of dick riding right now with the Clippers. I'm sorry I had to say it, but it's a lot of dick riding right now because two weeks ago, Lakers were oh you know these are the favorites. We they're the champions. They're going to win everything and. They have the Las Vegas odds, and now it's the Clippers that have the Las Vegas odds. I think the Lakers are a deeper team. They put the, a great, great roster together, um, considering the money that they had, considering um, the delay in time between assigning the free agents that they did. I think the Lakers did a good job. Now, let's get into the roster. For the point guards, we have Rajon Rondo, Quinn Cook. Alex Caruso. We have for the shooting guard Danny Green, Troy Daniels. For the small forward, you have LeBron and you have KCP. KCP, I kind of was like, ah, I don't really know. I'm not really feeling that. You know, he's to me, he's a streaky shooter. He started off kind of whack. He started to pick it up in the second half of the season. Uh, he's he's a he's a good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. But I had a conversation with uh, I had a conversation with a coworker, and a coworker was telling me he was like, "Man, he's like, dude, uh, KCP is not that bad of a signing." And I'm like, "Nah, man." And then you know I, what I just said, and he's like, "Dude, uh, KCP is a all right shooter. The problem was." He he's he's not going to get. I guess he didn't get as many open shots, and he's going to get more open shots this season because everybody's going to be doubling on Anthony Davis, or they're going to be doubling on LeBron, or Kuzma's going to be open. It's going to be more spaced out because you have 
big man down low. And he's going to be able to get more open shots. So he's going to be more efficient with his shots. And I say, you know what? You know what? You're right. You're right. Let me back up off of that KCP signing. Let me back up off of that. I, I, I'll hold that fine. I did feel like we could have used that KCP money to sign somebody like Marcus Morris, who signed with the uh, Spurs. But I'll hold that. I'm like, all right, that's cool. I'll take that. That's cool. So um, Anthony Davis for the power forward. Cal Kuzma, you know, Cal Kuzma's a stretch four. Uh, I'm going to get into the little Las Vegas Summer League thing that I saw. You got, for the centers, you got DeMarcus Cousins and JaVale McGee. That's a decent, to me, that's a decent roster. That's a roster that can compete. It may not look appealing. It may not look all flashy. But if you look at the Clipper squad, there's maybe five names, four or five names. And with the, and with the Lakers... I think that Danny Green, he adds that extra umph. He adds that extra. He's an elite shooter. He has that championship experience. He's been on these teams where he where he's had to kind of perform in tough, tight situations. And Danny Green is a great addition, right? He's a great addition. If considering all of the names that got passed on Sunday, right now is Friday. I mean, right now is Saturday. And you you get you're you're able to sign Danny Green, um, dis, despite all of Kawhi's little drama, you get to go ahead and sign Danny Green. So I think that the Lakers did excellent. I think the Lakers had an excellent um, free agency. Now there's a couple names that might be dangling. dangling. You have Avery Bradley. Avery Bradley it had just got waived. Um, also, you got a situation with Cal Corver. Uh, Lakers might be looking to get something like that. You know, for I think there's 13 spots that's taken up. I'm not sure. I might be incorrect, but the Lakers are in a good position. You have Anthony Davis that is pretty much on a one year rental. I wouldn't get too comfortable about saying that Anthony Davis is going to resign. You know, he right now he says he's going to resign, but I'll wait to the end of the season to kind of figure out what Anthony Davis is going to do. We won't worry about that. <laughs> we'll deal with that when that has when that comes. But this season is going to be a lot of if the season doesn't go well, let's just say I don't want to say let's just say a player gets injured. And this is a very important player for the Lakers, and he gets injured. Anthony Davis, uh, the question will be, oh, man, um, you know, free agency's coming up. What are you going to do? Are you going to re-sign with the Lakers? Um, or, you know, uh, I know I know. Th you expected this team to be like this and this and this and that. Things aren't really going so well. Are you going to sign with the Lakers? Right? So if the Lakers don't make the playoffs, if the Lakers don't, in a bad situation, let's just say you have a few injuries, you know, we're willing we don't. But I'm just saying in the event that that does happen, you never know. Uh, you don't know if players might get into arguments during, during the season. They feel like their playing style doesn't really mesh together. You don't really know. You know, I think I think that Anthony Davis and LeBron James are pretty tight. They're under the same management. LeBron is going to make sure that Anthony Davis is taken care of. I mean, he's going to be making sure that Anthony Davis is taken care of um, because LeBron's an unselfish player. He does he doesn't play selfish. It's not like uh, other players that I won't name that play hero ball. Um, Anthony Davis doesn't have to worry about stats because LeBron's a very unselfish player. So I doubt that anything arises uh, from LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Uh, but, you know, the Lakers are in a very, very good position. Um, I think with this team, you could go all the way. You really could. Some people are laughing at us. They're saying, man, you guys really think you're going to do something with this team? 
I think so. I really do. I think we're a little weak at the at the point guard position because we're going to be playing um, top of the line point guards in and out every game, 82 games. I know a lot of people are very excited about the Alex Caruso signing. I think he's a very good signing as well. But uh, the Lakers signed Rondo. wasn't a real. I wasn't a big fan of the Rondo signing. But considering how things are, and you know, I guess the experience of Rondo playing with AD, Rondo playing with DeMarcus Cousins, and him being kind of like a glue in the locker room uh, of that of that Pelicans team. That's the reason why they signed him. I don't know, but it was kind of like that season where the Lakers signed Meta World Peace just to kind of be around and be like a locker room guy. So I don't know. I really don't know what what um, the fuss is about, about like people being depressed because everybody's jumping on the, the, the Clippers bandwagon. But this stuff happens, man. You're going to have a whole bunch of people wearing Clippers jerseys and Clippers hats and yelling Clippers. You know, when a couple years ago, they were yelling Golden State Warriors. And a couple years before that, they were yelling Cavaliers or Miami Heat. So you know how the bandwagon stuff goes, man. If you're a Laker fan and you in this, you in this to win this. So you got to be down when everybody is kind of looking at you like a clown. <laughs> I don't mean to be rhyming, but damn. We got to toughen up, man. The squad that we got right now, look. It's war. We got to go out here. We got to compete. We got to ride for the players that we have on our team, man. Because it ain't no Lance Stevenson this season. It ain't no goofy stuff. It ain't no Shaq and the Fool this season. It's uh, it's some real good players on this squad. And I think that we could go, we can make a deep run in the playoffs, especially if you can find a way to get some someone like Iguodala who I think probably won't get bought out anytime soon. He'll probably get traded to a competitive team and he'll just, you know, try to make as much money as he possibly can, which he should. But in the event, I mean, that we could get Iguodala, man, that would be nice. But I don't know what the Lakers are going to do. I think the Lakers did an exceptional job. And don't let this Clipper Talk stuff get to your head, man. Don't let these brand new found uh, Clipper fans try to psych you into believing that because they have the Las Vegas odds that they're going to just beat the Lakers. And look, they're already saying that the Clippers and, and the Lakers, that's like a hallway series. That's going to be like the Western Finals. You don't know what may happen. Right, you got people saying that um, Kawhi he doesn't play a full season. Paul George is injury prone, so I mean you don't know what the hell may happen within a season. You can't get caught up in what uh, what may happen, what's going to you know what this person may do, and what they say on ESPN and what this guy's doing. Look, the Lakers. Are a deep squad, deep team. The Clippers, to me, they don't have that depth. They have Lou Williams, who's who's solid. He's coming off the bench, but as far as big man, when you get down low, and if Kuzma can um, figure out um, if he's bombing, if he just out there killing it as far as the shooting, come on, man. Lakers are gonna be a, a they're gonna be a damn problem. And then you got you got different guys who are just who can really shoot. Like this is what they're known for doing. And they have open shots. Because everybody's trying to double team Davis. And they don't want Davis or uh, Boogie Cousins down low getting no easy points. So I mean you're gonna have some open shots, man. We just gotta we gotta ride, man. So it's your boy D Star. This is my take on everything. Um you can like, you can dislike, you can comment below, man. Tell me what you think. I'm out.